Today, Amy is going to bring us some teaching, more about prayer. Have we missed Amy? I've missed Amy. You guys, I'm sure, have missed Amy. And she is excited to come and tell us a little bit more about God's teaching about prayer. So she is going to do that later. I just want to know if you've been learning the memory verse. You've been enjoying that song? Do not be anxious. Yep, I think I've got that in my head now as well. But hopefully that is helping you to remember those words that you do not need to be anxious about anything but in all things yep in prayer and petition when we ask god and with thanksgiving that um we can present our request to god yep and god's peace will come upon us and that is promised in that verse so continue to learn that continue to make sure it's in your head and your heart and here's our um our song to remind us once more About anything 
in everything By prayer and petition With thanksgiving Present your request to God that we have also been learning the Lord's Prayer haven't we so I have found some friends who are going to lead us in the Lord's Prayer so if you want to you can close your eyes you can keep them open but let's just say this together our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done as it's in heaven give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, from the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. The first question for 100 points. The prayer begins with our Father. To whom are we speaking? Is it A, our brother, B, our teacher, C, our God, or D, our parents? The answer is C. Our Father refers to God. The next question for 300 points. Our Father who art in blank. What word is missing from this line? Is it A. The garden, B. Church, C. The wilderness, or D. Heaven? The answer is D, our Father who art in heaven. The next question for 400 points. Hallowed be thy blank. What word is missing from this line? Is it A, name, B, fruit, C, age, or D, house? The answer is A, hallowed be thy name. The next question for one million points. Blank those who trespass against us. What word is missing from this line? Is it A, punish, B, ignore, C, forgive, or D, forget? The answer is C. Forgive those who trespass against us. The next question for a few points. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Which of the following choices is a bad thing we could do if we were tempted? A. Cheat on a test at school. B. Be mean to our classmates. C. Steal a candy bar, or D, all of these? The answer is D, all of these choices are bad things we could do if we were tempted. The next question for four points. Most of the time, at the end of the prayer, we say one word. What is that word? Is it A, thanks, B, bye, C, amen, or D, hallelujah? The answer is C. At the end of the prayer, we often say one word, amen. The next question for infinity points. Jesus taught this prayer to the disciples, who later became known as apostles. 
What is the known number of disciples? Is it A, 1, B, 14, C, 20, or D, 12? The answer is D. The number of known disciples is 12. And the last question for a bunch of points. The Christian Bible is divided into two parts. What are they called? Here's a hint. Old and new. Is it A. Deeds B. Commandments C. Doctrines or D. Testaments The answer is D. The Christian Bible is divided into two testaments. Thanks for playing Bible Trivia. I know I'm talking and walking, which for me is pretty good going. And it might mean for you a little bit of seasickness, but I just wanted to use this morning when I'm in the park to start to talk to you about Jesus and how he teaches us to pray at such a difficult and sad time for him. Now, just like I'm walking, Jesus walked every day. He was a walker. He walked to meet people. He walked to spend time with people. And he also tells and invites us that we can walk with him and learn from him today. So we're going to learn from Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, a way to pray in really difficult and sad times. Okay, so here I am in my own garden. Well, not my garden, but a garden that I found up on the hoe. It's a, a garden of remembrance, a place where people can come and remember. So I'm here this morning to read to you from Mark 14 to start us thinking about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Okay, so I'm just going to read to you. If you want to get your Bible and join us, we're in Mark 14 verse 32. Now guys, we know in the Gospels, in each Gospel, Luke, Matthew, Mark and John, they all tell this moment in Jesus' story. So you can get different versions and they're slightly different, but I'm reading to you today from Mark 14. So, are you ready? And they came to a place called Gethsemane. And he, Jesus, said to his disciples, sit here until I have prayed. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be very distressed and troubled. And he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch for me. And he went a little beyond them and he fell to the ground and he began to pray that if it was possible the hour might pass him by and he was saying Abba father all things are possible for you remove this cup from me yet not what I will but what you will now what I want to just let us think about then as we think, how does this teach us how to pray? Well, the first thing I want to share with you is that Jesus reminds us that we pray in all circumstances. This is a really heartfelt, isn't it, pain of Jesus. He is in pain, he's scared, he's afraid, he's human. Jesus became human so that he could feel all the things that we feel. And in this moment, he's afraid and he's scared. But he still teaches us how we too, when we're scared and afraid and sad, can come to Father. So what does he do? First of all then, he has a habit. That sounds strange, doesn't it? But Jesus' habit was always to do all things in prayer with his Father. In other words, he didn't do anything without talking to God about it. And when we're looking at prayer this week, we want you to learn the habit of prayer. The habit of talking to Jesus. Now, I love talking to Jesus when I'm in nature, when I'm walking my dogs, um, but I also have a few other strange habits. I pray when I'm brushing my teeth. I pray before I go to bed. I pray in my car. Once I even prayed 
over my oven and I pray Jesus to help fix my oven so a habit means something that we do often and Jesus in the beginning of this shows us his habit is to go when he's scared whatever he's feeling and talk to his father about it we want to be so honest because there's things that we're going to want to be honest with God about things that we're going to be sad about angry about and Jesus is showing us that we need to be honest so watch your habits watch your posture and can you be honest with God now if we can come to God in that way when we pray then we are praying like Jesus but there is one last thing at the end of his prayer at the end of being honest Jesus says okay not my will but yours in other ways in other words Jesus says okay God it's not what I want, but it's what you want. And sometimes when we pray, it's good to be honest, to get out what we're feeling, but then we just have to breathe and say, God, I trust you, you've got this. So guys, I love this moment and it's a heartbreaking moment. And we see everything about Jesus that reminds us that he's human like us when he was on this earth. But we also see him teaching us. He always said he wanted to teach us how to be like him, how to be in relationship with God and prayer talking to God is that make it a habit make it a habit do it when you brush your teeth do it when you're walking but make sure you do it you're just talking to your dad number two think about your posture how am I coming into my prayer life <laughs> do I need to get that right do I need to just check my heart number three be honest because God knows what you're thinking and feeling anyway and number four at the end of it all just say God I trust you. Okay, so that's what we learn from Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And hashtag, there is a secret, isn't there? We all know it. Even though Jesus had to go through this, he came through into victory. He knew it was going to be painful and he knew it was going to hurt. But he did it and he rose again victorious. So I would just say, in all our painful moments, God has a beautiful purpose on the other side. Okay guys, so quickly before you go, um, next week we are going to start some devotionals. So what that means is we are going to, every day I'm going to pop up a video on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, and we are going to read some of God's word, some of the Bible. We're going to pray together and we're going to have a think about Easter and the run up to Easter. Now what there are is we have these little boxes and inside these boxes are some lovely little things. Let's have a look, I'll show you. So in there, there's some lovely little things that are going to help us to remember the story and um, think about um, what Jesus did for us at Easter. Now, if you would like one of these boxes, then you can come and collect them from the bottom of the stairs in the church any day this week when, um, when we're open. Or um, if you get your grown-ups to contact me, I can make sure that I can get one of these delivered to you. Now, if you have brothers and sisters, you can either share one or you can have one each. It's up to you. But please let me know because we are going to be starting these next Sunday. Okay, how exciting. Okay, see you then. Bye.